Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, coming out of the book called The Shepherd of Hermes. We're looking at Command 9. Alright, now we've gone through the first eight commands. If you've missed those, you can find a playlist or individual classes over there on YouTube on our channel. This is Hermes Academy. We try to do a lot of classes out of the book of Hermes, but we also do classes out of other books like the King James Version, um, the Apocrypha, the Dead Sea Scrolls. Um, we even do books out of the Third Testament of the Bible. That's right, the Third Testament of the Bible. You can find that on our channel as well. But here we're going to look at Command 9, that we must ask God daily and without doubting. All right, we're going to jump right off into it. Verse 1 says, And he said unto me, Remove from thee all doubting, and question nothing at all when thou askest anything of the Lord. Saying within thyself, How shall I be able to ask anything of the Lord and receive it, seeing I have so greatly sinned against him? This, this chapter is about prayer and about doubting, more specifically about doubting. Doubting turns out to be something very dangerous to the um, to the children of God, to the, the children of the Father there. Doubting is one of the worst things you could do. Look at verse 2. Do not think thus, but turn unto the Lord with all thy heart, and ask him without doubting, and thou shalt know the mercy of the Lord, how that he will not forsake thee, but will fulfill the request of thy soul. But he but will fulfill the request of thy soul. Yeah, this is a PDF, guys, that I got from the uh, internet over there. There's a link in the description. I've copied it over into my Word file so I can work with it better. It's easier to work with it uh, Word than a PDF when it comes to doing these classes. But you see it has some errors in it. But that's all right. I got a hard copy right here. And pull it out. Got a hard copy right here so I can check to make sure everything lines up. All right. So let's go on to verse three. For God is not as men mindful of the injuries he has received, but he forgets injuries and has compassion upon his creature. Yeah. So you think about this. Well, what he's saying here is don't don't be afraid to ask. Don't be afraid to pray, even though we may find ourselves sinful or think we're not worthy of such. Our father, he he doesn't remember injuries, stuff that we do against him or do against his law or do against our brother. He doesn't remember those at all. We rem remember we're not hurting him. We're hurting ourselves, so there's no need to think that he's keeping track or you know going to hold stuff against us. We're harming ourselves. There's no need for him to punish us. We're punishing ourselves. But let's go on to verse four. He says, "Wherefore purify thy heart from all the vices of this present world, and observe the commands I have before delivered unto thee from God. And thou shalt receive whatsoever good things thou shalt ask, and nothing shall be wanting unto thee of all thy petitions, if thou shalt ask of the Lord." With Without doubting. This is something that the Reverend Pastor Deacon Dr. Doug tries to tell us is that the Father will answer all of our prayers. But he leaves out part. He doesn't tell us that we have to obey the commands, that we have to do what the scripture says in order for us to get all these blessings. He just tells us all we have to do is pray. That reminds me of that movie where, you know, one of the movies where uh, God comes down and he I think he gave the guy the opportunity to be God for a while and the first thing the guy did was he granted everybody's prayer everybody on the earth got their prayers answered and it was mass chaos you know well you know if it wasn't for the stipulation that we have to follow the commands well that's the what that's what the world would be it would be chaos everybody would be getting what they want you know if people have five six Lexuses in the yard looking for a new house to put them in or something like that but let's look at verse 5. He says, But they that are not such shall obtain none of these things which they asked. For they that are full of faith ask all things with confidence and receive from the Lord because they ask without doubting. But he that doubts shall hardly live unto God except he repent. Yeah, so those who have faith are able to ask for, you know, ask for different things. Now, we know that we may not always get them, but it is not because the Father is incapable of giving us what we ask for. It is usually because of some trial that we have to go through. And I think we find that out it find that out here in this section. But, you know, he he is capable of answering all of our prayers, but sometimes our prayers are not good for us. They say ask without doubting. My wife and I was having a conversation the other day, and she was talking about, she said, well, you know, how does the father feel when you 
pray for a thing and then you turn around and go get it. Like, for instance, if you pray for a car and then you turn around and then go, you know, try to take a loan out for a car instead of waiting for the Lord to provide it for you. How does he feel about that? Where are we going to find out? You know, that's that's a lack of faith and, and, it, and it harms us. What does it say there? That he who doubts shall hardly live unto God except he repent. So if we are doubtful when it comes to our prayer, it's going to cost us our salvation. Remember that the tribulation promises to wipe all of humanity off of the planet if it were not for the Father sending his word and his angels and his other protections here to save his chosen few. Well, if those people can't have faith in what they're praying for, faith that the Father is going to be able to give them what they need, they're going to make mistakes. They're going to run back over instead of putting their trust in angels. They're going to put their trust back in man. Instead of putting their trust in the Father, they're going to put their trust in mammon. And it's going to fail to them. They're going to end up dying. Is what he's talking about here. But let's look at verse 7. He says, For it may be thou shalt not presently receive it for thy trial, or else for some sin which thou knowest not. But do not thou leave off to ask, and then thou shalt receive. Else if thou shalt cease to ask, thou must complain of thyself and not of God, that he has not given unto thee what thou didst desire. All right. See, that's right there what he's saying. It, we don't expect all of our prayers to be answered. However, we should because the Father is faithful and able to answer these prayers. And we got a bit of a rainstorm about to come through here. So um, I apologize for the noise in the background. What does it say here? For it may be thou shalt not presently receive it for thy trial. Meaning, you know, if you're in trial, if you're going through something right now and you have necessary steps and you know things that you have to learn, some of your prayers will not be will not be answered. You know what I mean? If part of your uh, uh, trial is to suffer hunger, I'm sorry, you're not going to get a Big Mac. I don't care how much you pray for it. And then he says, or else some sin which thou knowest not. Yeah, apparently sin is another thing that will prevent us from getting our prayers answered. But that's what Hermes' Academy is about. Along with all of the scripture, it kind of helps us to understand what the sins are and what we have to do to be correct with the Father so we can get our prayers answered. But look what he says is if thou shalt cease to ask thou must complain of thyself and not of God remember that old saying at you have not because you ask not see what we're being told here is no matter how sinful we think we are we still have to pray and be faithful that the father will answer our prayers according to our best interest now let's look at verse 8 he says consider therefore this doubting how cruel and pernicious it is and how it utterly roots out many from the faith who were very faithful and firm for this doubting is the daughter of the devil and deals very wickedly with the servants of God. Yeah, it roots servants out of the faith. You know what I'm saying? And, and the Reverend Pastor Deacon Dr. Doug is culpable in this because he doesn't tell people what's necessary in order to get the prayers answered. All he does is says your prayer is supposed to be answered. Well, then when we go back next Sunday and say, uh, yo, Rev, we didn't get our prayers answered. What does he say? Well, you didn't have faith enough or you didn't believe enough. He still never tells us that we have to go back and keep the commandments, that we have to do what the scripture says in order to get the, get the commands. We have to get out of sin in order to get our prayers answered. He never does tell us that. But, you know, Hermes does. Praise the Lord for Hermes. He says, for this doubting is the daughter of the devil and deals very wickedly with the servants of God. Yeah, so once you have these guys over here down at the good reverend's camp, you know, praying their hearts out and not receiving their, their prayers, they start to become doubtful. And then a lot of them will walk away. They'll turn away from the faith. Be like, you know, you know. I never did see any evidence that the father was working in my life. And it's because you had too much sin or you had too much um had too much doubt or you know in in their life they they never did get to the point where they actually deserved any of this stuff you know but let's look at verse 9 he says despise it therefore and thou shalt rule over it on every occasion put on a firm and powerful faith for faith promises all things and perfects all things but doubting will not believe that it shall obtain anything by all that it can do okay so talking about faith versus doubting he says faith is faith promises all things and perfects all things while doubting will not believe that it shall obtain anything right so you know and that, and and so that's why when we ask of the father we have to be sure not to be doubtful because that's that's going to be 
a number one hindrance. The way we're le- reading here, and in, in the order that it put it, doubting may be the first thing that gets in the way of us receiving our prayers, not getting our prayers answered, is doubting. Right? But let's look at verse 10. He says, Thou see if therefore, says he, how faith cometh from above from God and has great power. But doubting is an earthly spirit and proceeded from the devil and has no strength. Yeah, that's a number one tool of the devil is doubting. So, you know, get the Reverend Pastor Doug to come over there and get you hyped up on Sunday morning thinking that all you need to do is pray for uh, pray for some money. I went to a church one time and the, and the person said, Pull out, you remember this, Stacy? She said, pull out a piece of paper and write down the number of the money that you want the Lord to, to bless you with. And I looked around and everybody's in there writing, including Stacy. Yes. Sitting there, how much did you write on your paper? I put a million dollars. How much did you get? Zero. Yeah, and so when you don't get it, then you like, what's wrong? There must be something wrong with me. And how many people will be steered from the faith because of that? Because they thought they was really supposed to get a million dollars. Wouldn't check the account. There are people actually taking loans out against that million dollars. No, no one will believe and they're going to get it eventually. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Doubting is uh, plain and simple. Just uh, disbelief. Disbelief. All right. Last verse. Verse 11. He says, Do thou therefore keep the virtue of faith and depart from doubting. And which is no virtue, and thou shalt live unto God, and all shall live unto God, as many as do these things. So if we can get rid of our doubting spirit, then we can live unto God. Right? That's what he's saying there. But and then he's talking about the virtue. Remember, at the end of our classes, we say that we teach virtues. Well, doubtfulness is one of the anti-virtues. That's one of the bad virtues. You got twelve good ones, and then twelve opposite ones, right? Yeah, it's um, one of those ladies that's. Um one of those uh, ladies that's dressed in black, right? Dressed in black with her hair all loose and her shoulders all out. And, you know, she's she's basically, you know, wilding out. That's one of the doubting is one of those one of those bad, wicked virtues. All right. So we wanted to put this little short class up. You got anything else, Stace? Well, I just wanted to say that, you know, doubting was here from the beginning. I think about uh, Eve. How she doubted the the father when he told her not to uh, touch the tree. She doubted him. Yeah, she, yeah, she believed Satan. She put more faith in what Satan had to say. And this ended up costing her so much. It ended up costing all of us when you think about it. That was doubting. You know, if she had full faith in what the father said, then she would have never listened to what Satan was saying in the first place. All right. Well, I guess we're going to wrap it up. What's your favorite word? Shalom. Shalom. Hermes Academy. Power, patience, continence, and faith. We teach virtues.